You're watching Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Uremchuk. Your one-stop shop for all things Oilers. Do Zach Hyman's 50 goals mean less because he's rich? Let's dig into it with the lead. <laughs> Today I'm going to provide some context. Here. Know, you got yeah, to play, the... play the bit of the video. You got to. Oh, yeah, we don't have it. If you missed it, there is a video going around on Twitter from a Montreal Canadiens blogger. Name who, him. Oh, Andrew Berkshire. Name. You can yeah, there. You can go look it up yourself and find out who basically said media is not reporting the full story on Zach Hyman. You should be talking about the fact his parents were rich. So today on Oilers Nation every day, we are going full investigative journalism on this. And we are digging up the T4s of every parent of the Oilers. And we're just going to really dig through who actually deserves to be applauded for being an NHLer. Like, he's trying to, <laughs> he's trying to kill the hardworking narrative of, of, of Zach Hyman's yeah. career. Like, look at his career, like, offensive performance trajectory. Like, he used to just score single-digit goals. Yep. And his hard work at his craft is what's allowed him to score more goals, like almost consecutively, year over year over well, year. You see, Berkshire touches on that actually. And he wants everyone to point out, because no one's doing it, how lucky Zach Hyman is. Yeah, privileged. To, yeah he, how privileged he is to get to play the majority of his career with Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid. He's privileged to do that. The assist king, Austin Matthews. <laughs> well-known power. Yeah, well-known <laughs> playmaker, Austin Matthews. Yeah, well, how many assists does he have this year? Like, what are we doing? Uh, anyways, welcome into Oilers Nation every day, everybody. Live from the Sports Closet studio. And it is a Sherwood Ford Giant Game Day edition of the show. Check them out online, SherwoodFord.ca. They got our boy BM in a new whip. I noticed yes. Surveyor Brett went out to Sherwood Ford the Giant the other day and got himself a new whip. Everyone's going to Ooh, Sherwood Ford go. the Giant. And so should you are going to have our short power sports and marine keys to victory coming up a little bit later on in the show. There's a lot to us to get through. Murata Tesh from The Athletic is going to join us in a little bit to give us a Winnipeg Jets report and talk a little bit about their side of this matchup. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about the standings, what went down last night, all of that stuff. But Oh, I didn't even, I, oh, I don't even know what happened last night. You well, didn't check any of the scores? Well, I didn't check. I was, no, I was in bed very early last night. Well, it'd be good to get a raw reaction from you when yeah. we read all the stats. Oh, because I'm the biggest Blues fan right now. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to oh, put thanks. a... Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that kind Spoiler. of... Ruined. Raw that reaction out the window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to get into that. That Burke kind of thing. I know Oilers fans were fired up. What are they it. saying? And understandably so. I thought uh, Christopher Palmer had a good one. If a rich family meant success, Mike Comrie would have had 2,000 <laughs> career points. Like, here's the other thing, too doing this and it's a problem in hockey so like laughing about it is you know no, I, I know it is. it's it. an expensive sport mm. to play but like to think if you're but the one thing you I... can't say the reason why he scored 50 goals is because he's rich and 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 try to discourage the hard-working narrative and nature of zach hyman like remove the the hockey is expensive it is a true that is a true thing mm -hmm. but not re a relevant argument to what Zach Hyman has done in his career. This guy works his fucking ass off. And the and, and and the thing we're trying to tell people, and it's not even necessarily, oh, if you work hard, you'll make the NHL. Like, no, like if you like not all of us possess the ability to make the NHL, whether we work hard or not. But if you work hard, you will get the best out of yourself that you can, regardless of what it is. And that is the narrative. And yeah. he's, he's using this as an opportunity to kind of blow it up like, to become viral and whatever. That guy's interesting. That guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just it's just stupid because like he's saying it's not that, like, it's not his first really horrific case. Yeah, and he's it, it, saying that like we're not talking about this narrative. Well, he's not talking about how Zach Hyman was never drafted into the Ontario Hockey League. You know, yeah, but his parents bought his an parents entire bought hockey league. league. They, they bought like, the NCAA. They bought U, uh, yeah, University Mich of Michigan. Michigan. Yep. And then they bought the Florida Panthers. Yeah. Sold them, bought the Leafs, or at least a small stake in the Leafs. <laughs> yeah, now, you know, be real. Yeah, now, now, <laughs> now they must be majority shareholders in Rexall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's follow the money, guys. Follow the money. It's just, do your own research, as I always say. Yeah, do your, don't follow these mainstream media outlets. Mm -mm. Jesus, I, I just, yeah, anyways, to it's just silly, it's just unnecessary. Like, I don't care, hate on the oil, I don't care. Like, it's, 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 it's oil, you know, it's Oilers Nation versus everyone. That's, that's fine. 
hate like that's but like this is a bad way to hate on us i i was thinking about this the other day too like why do we just have to crap on everyone's accomplishments? Like not even just in Edmonton, oh. but like the ones I think about, like obviously Hyman scoring when Tyson Berry was here or oh, all he gets his secondary. Assist. His parents also rich. Probably. Like we, like some people like talk about Austin Matthews, like, wow, look who he scores against. And it's just like, well, no, he's a great goal scorer in the NHL. Probably going to be one of the best. Yeah. I respect like Austin Matthews ability to score, but I, I can too. still make fun of him. Um, he also followed it up with a great take on Carey Price. Okay. <laughs> um, Kerry Price, again, First Nations background, remote parts of BC. Berkshire wanted to point out that Kerry Price had the advantage. His dad had a plane and was able to fly him to remote practices. So that needs to be pointed out in the story of Kerry Price as well. Like he is just, he's on fire. It's, 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 it's a really interesting run of takes from this dude. Um, anyways, we love Zach Hyman and, and you all know that. Uh, and again, if you wanted to start going through like, Let's talk about how expensive Connor McDavid's private training was when he was 14 years old and up. Like, come on now. Do so. you think if he didn't have it, like, it's it, anyways, whatever. You, we, you, we, you, yes, it's, we, we'll digress and move on. But I wanted to start the show with that just because I saw it and I listened to it. Someone sent it to me on my drive to work. I was like, I'll throw that on the old Bluetooth and give it a listen. And I wasn't even watching the video. I'm just driving there like, what am I for? This is four minutes of my life. I'm never getting back. Um, so we'll push that off to the side. Zach Hyman going for goal number 51, maybe more tonight as Edmonton takes on Winnipeg. On pace for 59 this season. Oh, imagine he hits 60. That that should be the focus. Get him 60. Well, yeah, you can get 50. Then, then what? You now can get what? 50 with rich parents. 60? Yeah, like you, I don't know. So I go on, you do your thing. We'll get to that later. Then it's a corporate conspiracy. Well, I mean, it's, first off, it was a four minute. I really want to move on, but there's so much to hate about what I listened to. I can't believe Did you listen to all of it? I listened to the whole four oh, minutes. I wouldn't even waste, couldn't waste my own time with it. Yeah, I listened to the whole four minutes. There's a part at the end where he's like, you know, Zach Hyman, blah, blah, blah. He do, he's a player who is good at doing one thing and it's going to the net. Whoa, crazy. Like, what okay, well, like, how come uh, not every NHLer does that? Austin Matthews is good at one thing, shooting the puck. Yeah. I just don't get it. If it, scoring goals are so easy, everyone would do it. Exactly. Just That's live it. in the blue plane. It, yeah. It, it's a it's an art in itself. Yeah. If more rich guys were interested in going to the net, we'd have a lot more 50 goal scorers in today's league. It's we'd actually have a that. way worse league, too, if everyone just scored that way. It'd be so boring. <laughs> just everything's a bad if it was that, that easy, no, where everyone yeah. would just go to the net. Well, but if it was just going to the net that scored goals, and it's it totally changes the game, and then opens up an opportunity for an Austin Matthews. He's like, you know what? I'm going to try shooting from distance <laughs> yeah. now, just because everyone's focused about the guy in the post, and then that guy's going to score the goal. Hopefully, we never get that. Uh, Daki. Very interesting to decide to go after the single nicest guy in the league. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just on the Hyman thing as well. <laughs> This is my stance. <laughs> it's not even like he comes off as like a prep, like entitled, no, whatever. No. Like he is by all reports, Humble, you humblest guy going. Matt Larkin covered the Leafs and tweeted this morning. He was like, "Man, just out of blue, I miss covering Zach Hyman." Or you know what it was, and we can pivot the conversation to this. That video of Zach Hyman mic'd up, scoring his fiftieth uh, cool. goal. Oh, how unbelievable was that? Perry giving him a hug and. Uh, Chris Knobloch coming over and, and telling him how proud he is. almost in tears on the bench. Yeah. Like, you don't think it means something for him? You don't think he worked his fucking ass off to try to score 50 goals in the NHL? And he's now realizing that moment. And there's like this insane sense of pride that's overcome from all of the hard work, from all of the money he had as a kid <laughs> coming and paying dividends. Yeah. And he's used to dividends because he's so fucking rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the the moment with Leon was cool. Very it's cool. like high, he called his name before you put the puck yeah. in the net. And, and then they was, went back. They did the thing in the corner, and then Connor and Leon went back and circled to him after in front of the bench. Like yeah. that's how pumped they were because they, they that's who Zach Hyman is. It was great. The one thing that made me chuckle, <laughs> they refer to him in his full last name, Hyman. Like everyone <laughs> does, though. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of joke in the room about it. Why? I don't know because you would think like Himes. <laughs> no, come on, Jay. I don't think that's it. But like you think they'd call him Himes or yeah. like some that's other it. short form. But like yeah. everyone was like, "Atta boy, Hyman, Atta boy, Hyman." <laughs> it's funny. Uh, bring Cassie in home. Jeff Bezos noted seventy goal scorer. <laughs> yeah. Tore up the WHL, Jeff yeah. Bezos. <laughs> yeah, he played for the Thunderhawks or Thunderbirds. 
Go T Birds. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one from a guess, you know. All right, you guys are on fire over in the Charm Diamond Center's YouTube chat. Uh, let's talk a little bit of hockey here Edmonton versus Winnipeg. Oilers wrapping up a three game road trip where they stop and, and looking to just get their first points of this road trip, which is really painful to say when you look at the out of town scoreboard and what went down last night. The LA Kings picked up a victory. They are now just one point back of the Oilers. They How many games in hand do we have? Two. One, two. Okay. Well, we play them on Thursday. <laughs> I know it's a big one. That race is suddenly close. And it's a bad weekend. Here's what I'll say about the importance of coming in second. I do think, and sometimes I talk out of two both sides of my mouth on this one, but whatever. I do think sometimes home ice advantage in the playoffs gets like a tick overblown. Just because as great as it is to have game seven on home ice, playing game six on the road is also not easy. I know it's a fourth home game, and, and that is good. But sometimes I just think it gets... But it's also the advantage of getting the series started. Series started. And, that, and see, and that's where I wanted to go specifically with the Edmonton Oilers. Um, when you said series started, my phone thought you said Siri. Um, the Oilers end the season with... Hey, Siri, text Amber. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, <laughs> the Oilers end the season with back-to-back -back games on the road on the 17th and 18th. Today, Frank Saravalli shared the schedule for the league that the playoffs are going to start on the 20th. You can jump to the logical conclusion. I thought they started on the 22nd. They were supposed to. They, they were supposed to. The NHL wants to move it up so the playoffs can begin on a Saturday. <sighs> Clever. Finally. Well, it's smart. Scheduling. I know, but yeah. So the Oilers play on the 17th and the 18th. Logic would say they're going to start their playoffs on Sunday the 21st. They're not going to put the Oilers on that first batch of game on the 20th. And that last day of the regular season, mm -hmm. if it's not all Western Conference games, it's predominantly Western Conference games. So it would make sense. The East playoffs will likely start on Saturday. They'll start the West on Sunday. If you're the Oilers, after playing 17th and 18th on the road, I think you desperately want to fly home that night after the Colorado game. As fast as possible. Maybe leave... At the second intermission. Yeah, like get some important guys on a different plane and be like, Connor, Leon, yeah. Stu, like you guys head back. Sam Carrick's going to play 18 minutes in the third period tonight. <laughs> if you have to start on the road, all of a sudden you're flying out on the 16th. You're staying on the road for that run to play the first two games in LA. Who knows how spread out those first two games are. Well, they would go straight to LA from Colorado. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm saying the Oilers. Which is also not a bad thing. Just go and chill and like bond as a team. I think you want to come home. Well, you always want to sleep in your own bed. Yeah. So I think it's really important for the Oilers to lock up home ice. Another layer of it, LA's last four games are all at home. And they finish on the 18th as well. So they're going to be sitting there on a nice, cushy, 10-day homestand. You do not want to go into LA to start the series. I think it's massive. I think it's bigger than maybe people realize because I don't think you want to be on the road that long. Oh, man. I No, I, I, I agree. I think just playing at home is obviously just important too. And it would almost be... It would be a failure at this point if yep. they didn't get home. I love what we're talking about playing L.A. It still could be Vegas. Oh, it, well, this could still fall into a wild card spot. Yeah, I mean, not totally. Not, that will not happen. We play Vegas and L.A. once each. Those are big, here. big, big, big games. Got to find a way to win those. Big. Um, Just quickly, another thing, too. I know the Lakers are a potential play-in team in the NBA. So that would play into the schedule as well, because that's right when the NBA playing games that are supposed to be. Last time, right? Yeah, and it, but they'd probably want the Lakers playing on a Saturday. Are you talking about maybe we might get pushed to Monday? That's what I mean. Like we always get stitched by the basketball teams at uh, Crypto.com, yeah. don't we? Also, for people who maybe want to go down to LA and watch watch the playoff games, it gives you if the Oilers start at home another couple of days to to plan that all out. So, I, I think it's really really crucial for the Oilers to lock up home ice advantage in round one of the playoffs, and it also just opens up the door that if a Vancouver were to get upset in round one, then hey, who knows? Maybe you have home ice advantage in round two as yeah. well. And I don't think Vancouver getting upset in round one is the craziest of ideas ever, especially considering they might have to play the Nashville Predators, who are. They can't stop. The Nashville Predators. They are it? red hot. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Okay. If you're going to do a little victory lap on the Nashville Predators, I'm going to take a victory lap Go on. Ahead. There's no playoff race anymore in the Western Conference. Yes, there is. Liam. Liam. Red. Liam. <laughs> yes. I, I now know what that means. <laughs> I read to you Vegas is next four games, three games. Can't remember what it was. 
That is an extremely difficult schedule. They are five points up on St. Louis with the game in hey, hand, Liam. I get it. And I think they're now in the last night, basically. So I'm assuming the Vegas won us. last night. Yes, they did. Was it a drubbing? In, all the time. Oh. St. Louis missed a penalty shot in overtime, and then Vegas scored on the next shot. Yeah, oh, it would have been, but it was still to give Vegas a point, which doesn't help. But yeah, so, yeah, it that was a big game. So they're still in a three point gap. So, St. Louis, Oilers Cooks. chance of first place Bye-bye. done. St. Louis done. Yep. Well, Vancouver lost last night. Doesn't I, matter. I think it's, it I doesn't think matter. It We're running out of games. I and ultimately a, think that, yes, Vegas are the front runners 100%. I just don't think it's over. Like, I Vegas really hope easily, Mark Stone doesn't come back. They've got Nashville next. What did I say? Vancouver, yep. Colorado, I think was the yeah. other one. Minnesota, really maybe. Like, said. they only have two easy games to, to the rest of the way, and it is Chicago and Anaheim in the last two games of the season. I don't know what St. Louis' schedule uh, is. Vegas probably is fine. Up. They'll start. Liam, they, they I'll allow you to fine. take a victory lap with the Predators. Thank you. I didn't believe you. And they, they have, have many points as the others now. The Blues do have a somewhat easy schedule. No, they don't. Nashville? They do the blues 88. I said Nashville. Nashville. Oh, but we have points games percentages up and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but same amount of points. They might like they could sneak into a top three in the Central. Liam, no, it's so five, five points. There's 11 games left in the season, man. Nashville's on a five game win streak and Winnipeg slide in. I'm just they saying, are not out of the question. To slide tonight. They lose tonight. I think Nashville play. It is so then it's three points. It is so hard in today's NHL to make I up those totally gaps. I get it. I just don't think everything's as dead as you're making it seem. Well, I think it is. Well, there you go. <laughs> we'll talk about it in 10 games, 11 games. We will. All right. I'll be right here. <laughs> Uh, fighting Amish or what? With mom and dad fight. <laughs> right. oh. Hunter said, "What's St. Louis's schedule?" They Here get we go: Calgary, San Jose, Edmonton, Nashville. Who is the best team in the NHL? San Jose, Anaheim, Chicago, and then they end the year with Carolina, Seattle, Dallas. So they do play five pretty tough games in there, and they also play San Jose twice. So that's four points. Mm, you're saying the San Jose Sharks, who are a one seven and two in their last ten. Yeah, they're they're bringing some teams I don't over. Know, as a Northern fan, you can't really take them for granted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Chicago in there, Anaheim. God, San Jose might not crack fifty <laughs> points this year. They're forty points right now. They they Twelve to go. Yeah, they're dead last. Wow, that there. Do you remember terrible. a couple of weeks ago on on uh, BM brought up those odds. And Chicago with yeah. the best odds, and San Jose was like still plus four hundred or something like that to be the worst record in the NHL. Sure, oh, really, that should have good really bet. jumped on that. Yeah, yeah. that would have been good. You know, yeah. there was one bet in terms of the futures for the NHL that I'm very close to throwing a little bit of money on, and that is the, to win the President's Trophy. So the race for the President's Trophy right now is insane. You have the Rangers and Canucks at ninety eight points, and then you have Florida, Colorado, Carolina, Dallas, and Boston. All at ninety seven. That's like there's realistic. So throw a dart at one of the ninety sevens. So Boston is. I'm pulling it up right now on our friends at Betway. The Boston Bruins are twelve to one. Wow, they got so that's many, value. So many overtime points too. I know they're shady. And then you look at Colorado plus three seventy five. They're dominant on home ice, and they have seven of their final eleven are on at home. Ooh including their last game of the regular season would be at home to the Oilers. And you might be able to look at that game and go Edmonton sitting everybody. And well, Colorado could too, but if they're both sitting everybody, take the home team. Like that should be two points. They have like, I don't know. 20 line back in intermission. We've covered this. Yeah. Oilers 10 points back of the first place Rangers 80 to one to win the president's trophy. <sighs> Maybe it's worth two bucks. Maybe it's anything's not. worth two bucks. As you learned with your big pre-built bet hit oh, this that week. That was nice. That was nice. Brought donuts to the office. You missed it. No, I missed it. Thank you. They're delicious. Office tradition. If you hit a big bet, you have to bring in donuts. You have to bring in donuts to the, to the office the next day. Um, Calvin Pickard voted one of the four finalists for goalie of the week last week. But playing a minimum of three games. Oh, because he technically appeared in three? He played in the, um, the Toronto, Toronto game to end it. Yeah. He up against Ottawa. Well, Twitter would have you believe he's the worst goalie in the NHL. So maybe Casey just... DeSmith, Jake Hodinger, and Samuel Harrison. Wow. Just Samuel a Harrison. who's who of goaltending right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the Aiden brings up a good point. They won't sit Nate Mack for that final game if he's still on his home point streak. Yeah. Oh, they, that's true. They would let him get his 41. So they'll again, send him home after he gets his point, though. He'll get a point for shift and just right down the Remember time. when Connor was chasing his first 100 point season? He went and got it and like just like 
chilled. I think that was against Vancouver. It was. There was also a game where the Oilers played the Canucks. This was Rexall Place Decade of Darkness. Or I think it was like Henrik Sedin at the end of the year. He just went out and played like three shifts in the first period, then sat. I think he was like partially banged up, but they wanted to keep his games played streak alive or something like that. They also did something. I remember that game. Some fans were upset because Vancouver was just doing a bunch of stuff to get awards and keep milestones going. (laughs) They intentionally played both goalies half the game so they could win the Jennings. Oh, my. Goodness. They like split dead on Luongo so and uh, Schneider? Schneider. Yeah, the Jennings is a tandem. Yeah, best yeah. goal. Do they team still team. offer that? Yeah, yeah. Well, last year it was Boston. But you don't see it at the NHL awards, do yeah. you? I don't think they officially present it because it's just stats based only. But yeah, I think it's just announced like the rocket as well. Yeah, is it, do they present that at the awards? The, yeah, uh, I, they do like a little video thing. The voted the ones, I guess. You don't vote yeah. on the Jennings. You don't vote on the yeah, Jennings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bruins have won it two of the last four years. How I totally that? forgot it was a thing. I yeah. only remember it from my sticker books. Ah, <laughs> that's a good pull. All right, uh, let's continue along with the show. It's a short for giant game day edition of the program. Like I said, we're going to be joined by Marat Atesh in a little bit, but let's get into our lineup report. It is brought to you by Service Credit Union, which is home to the service big share contest. It is back for a sixth year, and it is your chance at winning one million dollars you can get entries just by saving money every 500 dollars you save gives you five entries into the service big share contest you can even transfer your existing savings to service for a chance to win one million bucks i wonder how many entries zach hyman could have <laughs> wouldn't even need it that's pocket change say, to him he wouldn't he care about this. that money yeah a million bucks for me though i'd like that contest ends april 30th 2024 skill test required for rules visit service.ca slash when we got new lines at the Oilers skate today, once again, mixing it up a bit, partially because of Andrew Kane is back in the lineup. Also, though, a change on the fourth line. New time and McDavid stay together as the top line. Henrik Dreisaitl Fogel stay together as the second line. What do we make of this top six here? What did we make of Henrik up there? Oh, I think taking Herrick Carrick out against a team like Winnipeg is a bad idea. Mm-hmm. What do we make of the top six, Liam? <laughs> I asked you about the top six. He doesn't care. <laughs> Lehman. Uh, I just... About a week ago, they had that quote. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Nuge. You said, like, we're just going to... We don't mind it when the lines get shuffled because it gives us a chance to play with other guys and, like, add a bit of chemistry there. But I just... What was Adam Henrique brought in to be? Is he going to be a top six winger for you or do you want him to try and be that shutdown guy on the third line? Because... I thought that's what we were quite acquiring him to do. And I think Ryan McLeod is a much better winger than a forward. So I would just switch both those guys. But then also, like, Kane, Henry, and Perry doesn't really work. I honestly would have put Kane on the first line again. And then what do you do with Nuge? Put him next to dry sidle. And then you maybe do you just ride McLeod there or you switch one of those two around. Yeah. Put Nuge back at center between who would that be? Perry and. Oh, no, Henry can nuge and Perry. I don't know. I just don't like Kane on the third line because I think he's he's done well there uh, in time. And but I don't like he's struggling. You need him to score a goal. And I don't like McLeod as a center either. I just don't I do not like McLeod as a center. So, Jay, we were in the building the game they did the Henrik Nuge Perry trio. And while I've been someone who complains about the lack of speed in the bottom six, when you maybe don't have a guy like McLeod or you don't, Holloway hasn't been here for a while. I will say, I think that Henrik, Nuge, and Perry line, they think the game well enough and they play a similar enough style that they can actually be effective with their lack of speed. Well, it's again, like, like look at Joe Thornton, man. Like, he played so long because he's so smart. Mm-hmm. These are all very high IQ guys. I I, I love that third line. Um, them as a third line, I should say. Yeah, it's... <laughs> But Cloud, you can't have a guy who doesn't like to be in the middle of the ice playing in the middle of the ice. <laughs> yeah, his favorite thing to do is skate the puck behind the net. Is yeah, perimeter guy. Keep him to the wing. Uh, Again, so, I, I don't mind a little bit of experimentation here and there, seeing if Henrik's a fit with Drysaddle, whatever. And they're sticking with these, or at least this top six for a second straight game. So, you know, we've said a few times, or a lot of times since the deadline, find something and stick with it for. Three to five games, right? Like, even moving Kane to the second line, putting Henrik to the third line center, and moving McLeod to the wing. I have time for that, but I, I don't like I, I, that'd be interesting. I don't like Kane and Dry as a duo because there's not a lot going on defensively there. Well, yeah. Nuge and Dry work together. 
Nugent Dry worked very well. And then you have the speed and Fogo, like a lot different, but it is kind of like when Yamamoto played on that line yep. that one stretch, right? And I do like, again, that top oh. line is so damn good that, it, like, I think that, and I mean, the numbers do back it up. That top line is just as effective as loading up 29 and 97 when you go Nugent, McDavid, and Hyman. So, in one hand, I get this get a legit top line in there. On the other hand, I, I think Nuge, Dry, and Fogel can be good enough, opens up that third line. And Evander Kane, if we want to talk about getting the most out of him, stapling him next to McDavid isn't terrible. I know he drags down the pace of play a little bit with him, and people will point to the expected goals and the um, and the puck possession and things like that. I get that. But Connor McDavid's still going to get his at five on five, regardless of if it's Nuge or Kane. And I think it makes the two lines below them strong enough you can justify the drop in production you get from 97 because lines two and three are then so much better. You know? Yeah. No, I, I would, I would agree with that. I just, I don't like to find something I, out of Kane here. I don't mind the idea of, of making Kane and Henrique a duo. They connected on one already. And yeah. it was actually a play made by Kane. Hmm. Kane and Henrique. See, and but then my problem is, who do you have on the right side? Like, unless you wanted to play McLeod on the left, flip Kane to the right, you're dealing with a lefty-righty issue there. Mm -hmm. But then at least you have some speed. But then, you know, that involves potentially elevating a Corey Perry to the top six, which I don't love the idea of doing. I will say that this does get a lot easier to kind of sort out if Dylan Holloway is up here. Because then it's very easy to have speed on every line and to have some physicality on every line. Like, I'm just waiting for him to come back into the lineup. We'll talk quickly about the other decision that's made, and that's Derek Ryan in for Sam Carrick. You don't like that, Jay? Not against Winnipeg. Like, that's a team that can throw us around a bit. Uh, you know, you, you need to have some meat there. And that's what Carrick brings. Like, what has he done to be pulled out of the lineup? Yeah, I, I think they want to keep some sort of a rotation going is maybe know, a part then, of it. Then put him in the net. Like, I don't know. If I remember correctly, he got worked in the faceoff dot last game, so it wasn't his best, or far from his best game as an Oiler. I did think he was good against Toronto, though. Um, but yeah, Carrick in the face. Oh, no, never mind. He was 60%. Ignore what I just said. He was 60%. He was fine in the faceoff dot. He had three hits, had a shot on net. So, yeah. I, Sounds like a pretty good afternoon. Yeah, I think they want to keep some semblance of a rotation going where everybody gets in every couple of games mm -hmm. in that bottom six. So I'd rather them do it tonight than against LA. And and if if that is like if that's the logic, I can subscribe to it. I just, you know, this is it's like this is a big game for a lot of reasons, but it's also just like it's a it's a measuring game. Like, how do we measure up against the Jets? Jets made two really good acquisitions. I know they're slumping right now, but they're gonna be hungry to get out of a slump similar to us. So it's 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 a kind of interesting size up game. Yeah. So you you know, I'd kind of like us to put our best foot forward. And I and that is no like that I, I I love Derek Ryan, but just I love Sam Carrick mm -hmm. and what he brings. On the blue line, you want to move there? Do you have another take on the forward group? No, I'm good. The return of nurse and CC, Troy Stetra stays out. I'm surprised we aren't we didn't see Troy Stetra once on this road trip. They Granted, should... I didn't even see, notice they switched to parents on the blue line. So Nurse and Cece together. Nurse and Cece back that together. My Reunited. Action. Wow. Earned, not given. Totally. God, those two might, like, Nurse has not been good recently. But offensively, like, his nope. penalty killing has been kind of brutal. CC, CC. I don't know. So does that mean Kulak and they on there and air back together? Well, that's good. Pairing. I think this was an easy game to get Stetcher in again. again I think they're scared to scratch Cece. Oh, I think that's apparent. I think it's totally obvious. Like, there's no way Chris Knobloch's watching that much different of a game than we are. What the, if you want to call it a defensive keeping Cody CC in the lineup, it's for the penalty kill, I guess. Like, you probably don't trust Stetcher there yet. And then you run into an issue if your right side is Bouchard, Stetcher, DeHarnay. Let's say one of your four PK guys, I call him Nurse Kulak or DeHarnay, takes a penalty then you have to use one of Bouchard or Stetcher on the PK. That is the only defense. I think people might laugh at this. You, you can probably trust Evan Bouchard for 65 seconds on a penalty kill. 
Oh, I don't know about I that. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> Liam? I, I, Lehman? But like, I, no way. Like, you <laughs> what probably, did he, how much bad I'm not gonna ask that. possibly do in one game there? <laughs> you probably could if punch Were the puck battles in the corner or two on one? Yeah. I I wouldn't. That's the last I would person not. I want on this team. Aiden really said, good. yeah, our PK that gave up three goals Sunday. Well, I mean, Sunday we sucked. Yes. Let's just call a spade a spade there. We sucked. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would trust Bush. So I like I understand the idea of keeping CC in for that reason, but also they should have thought about that when they acquired Stetcher. They should have acquired Chris Tanev. Thoughts? That would have been nice. Hmm. But with that logic too, Tyler, and I agree with it. What does this mean? They thought they were never going to get Stetcher in. Are they waiting for a Bouchard injury? I mean, you can't wait for that. I know, though, but right? Like, if they don't trust this guy to play in minutes or or Bouchard to play on the penalty kill, then you're essentially saying like, we actually don't need you on the right side. Yeah, right? is that a fair assessment? I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I like it. Maybe they should play him more. I and I thought again, we're watching them do this rotation thing up front. You do that on the blue line, like again, they were clearly okay sitting at Vander Kane for a game. Whatever the hell ended up happening with that. Day. A coach, a coach's decision coach's maintenance, maintenance day. day. Like how does that? What? what? Maybe it's called a healthy scratch. Actually, you know that. Oh, uh, we have a guest coming up, but yeah. I just downloaded a video of Kane talking to the media this morning about that scratch. Ooh, I want to get your instant reactions. That's why I kept throwing my AirPods here was to hear watching. that. How long of a video is it? It's like thirty seconds. Oh, it wasn't to watch a March Madness game. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I appreciate your focus. <laughs> do we want that now, or do we want it after the guest? After the guest. Okay, after the guest. Let's get out to the Star Mechanical guest line, Edmonton's number one plumbing and heating company. You can find out more information about them at starmechanical.ca. You can trust your local star, whether it's residential or commercial, or if you need 24-7 emergency service. They've been helping Edmonton families for over 20 years, and they can help you too. Murata Tesh, our friend from Winnipeg, he writes for The Athletic, joins us, and he's rocking a toque. He's got the big sweater. Is spring up sprung in Winnipeg, Murat? You know, it did. It teased us a little bit, and now it's on the way out. We've got winter again to welcome you guys to, to the city today. Yeah, you know what the weather's like in Edmonton. It <laughs> turned again. I thought we were out of it. Uh, speaking of cold, the Oilers have lost back-to-back -back games. The Jets are in a weird little cold streak as well. What's been going wrong for Winnipeg over the last three nights? <laughs> I mean, the answer to that is a lot of things. Rick Bonus uh, was just talking to reporters, including myself, at after morning skate. And there are questions about the Winnipeg Jets' effort level right now and will and work ethic. Uh, Rick Bonus was talking a lot about how all the systems and structure talk in the world doesn't matter if the other team is hungrier than you are. And Winnipeg sort of had its, its butt handed to them a couple of times over the weekend, particularly by the Islanders. The Jets were outscored 5-1 halfway through the game against New York. And at that moment, the fifth goal went in. Winnipeg had four shots. So there are trouble. There are signs of trouble. Winnipeg's defensive structure has largely fallen apart. We can get into it because there's a lot there, but Winnipeg's reeling as Edmonton arrives today. Yeah, I also think it's interesting. Like the last three games, obviously not going well. And I was just looking there, 655 points percentage on the year, but just going from, let's say, Feb 1 on, they've kind of slipped a bit behind the pace that the Stars and the Avs are on. Are the issues in these last three games, are they something that's maybe a bit of a concern in a longer-term trend with them? Yeah, I think you can take it back about six weeks. I think that there's been a real dip in the quality of Winnipeg's play probably from late January onward, just before the All-Star break and then coming out of it. There's been a sense about Winnipeg's game that some nights the offense comes too easily, the forwards and defense get a little bit separated as the forwards chase uh, chase their next goal. The gap isn't good defensively because the defense doesn't trust the forwards to get back. The Jets are getting beat in transition an awful lot, like too much for a team that is thought to be amongst the Stanley Cup contenders and earned that right to be called that through basically the end of January. There's some real... There's some real games where the stars are scoring, but they're giving an awful lot back too. And you saw Mark Shifley, Kyle Connor, Brendan Dillon, and Neil Pionk, all minus four, I think, at the end of that New York Islanders game. There are some good players posting some bad results right now. 
How is uh, how's Tyler to Foley fit in since being acquired from the Devils? I love that fit. I love that fit. He's uh, he's a shoot first player, and uh, he has a lot of different ideas for how to find himself in space because he's not that fast. That was one of them, actually I should have known this, but I was expecting a speedy player. I was expecting a guy who looked dangerous on the rush consistently based on his shot volume and his profile analytically. But really, what he's got is not a high-end top speed. It's a first few steps that's really quick, and he's so smart about finding soft ice. He had a pair of games where he was scoring two goals each. He's fit in really well with Sean Monaghan. Nikolai Ehlers is playing on that line as well. And I like the ehlers Toffoli chemistry. I think Ehlers is one of the most dynamic skaters in the offensive zone. People don't know what he's going to do. That opens up space. Toffoli finds it, and there are some dangerous passes to be had. So that's a nice looking thing for Winnipeg right now. God, that top nine is so good looking. Yeah, I just think they're just in a <laughs> funk. Like, just they're gonna wake up. They gotta. I, it's a function of waking up for them. That's it. Uh, I'm you scared tonight. You talked about Monahan fitting in on that second line. We haven't had a chance to chat with you since they made that other big splash and big addition to their forward group. I know he was held pointless through his first four games with the Jets, and then he got really hot for a while. Now that Monahan's had some time to really settle in here, twenty some games in a Jets uniform, what's that impact been like? And also on the power play, I know that was an area they were hoping he'd have a big impact. Yeah, exactly right. That's the area to focus on. Uh, Sean Monahan's impact has been biggest on the power play and it's been biggest in the bumper position on the power play i talked to a couple of his ex-teammates who were telling me that he is as good as anybody they've ever seen play in that center slot on the power play now to watch it happen you can sort of see why he's always shoulder checking he knows where everybody is on the ice so he has a plan before he gets the puck it's not get the puck turn towards the net see what he's got he knows where the shooting lanes are. He knows where his passing lanes are. He's always making little micro adjustments, half a foot this way, half a foot that way, trying to get his stick in a spot where Mark Shifley can find it. There's a lot of good communication going there. It was the best when Gabriel Velarde was still healthy. He won't be playing tonight because Velarde at the goal line is just a dynamic power play quarterback from the goal line. There are a lot of slingshot passes, Shifley, Velarde, Monaghan. That's when you saw Monaghan pour in the offense. At five on five, he's been fine. He's been quality. He scored a little bit. That chemistry with Toffoli is building or, or ongoing. But his biggest impact, I think, has been to help give the Jets power play real danger, which it hadn't had before him. Another guy I wanted to ask you about as we wrap up the talk about their forward group, and it kind of applies to a similar situation in Edmonton we've had with Dylan Holloway, where there's been a ton of talk about how do you get him back into the lineup when he's in the lineup? Are you playing him enough to be successful? Cole Perfetti is interesting because these additions on the forward group have pushed him down. And earlier in the year, I was just flipping through his game logs. Yeah, like he was playing 14 to 17 minutes a night. And now you look as of late, he's had in three of his last five games under 10 minutes time on ice. How's Perfetti adapted? Is he still finding a way to be impactful in the bottom in the bottom six, or is he getting lost in the shuffle a bit? You know, a little bit of both. He he was on a really long offensive slump. I, was, I think it was 23 games he went without a goal. There was an assist or two in there, but it was not the the same type of production that he had to start the year. Like you can go October to about middle of January through those game logs, and that's a great question because he's a key player for the Jets. He was producing like a top six forward, playing top six minutes. And it was like, geez, maybe he should be on the first power play unit instead of the second. Like that was the sort of talk about Cole Perfetti first half of the season. Then he got into a bit of a slide. Kyle Connor comes back. Some of those minutes go away. The scoring chances start hitting posts. Then they start missing nets. And now there's a long slide and confidence is an issue with the additions especially if and when Gabriel Velarde returns to health, there's a clear top nine. There's a clear top nine and Cole Perfetti isn't in it. But with Velarde out of the lineup, there seems to be a chance there that, that the coaches aren't giving to him. And I think that that's been hard for a young player. This is probably the first time he's been a, a fully-fledged member of a team where he hasn't been in a starring role for any length of time. And I talked to him about that today, to be honest. It's been an adjustment. It's been a learning curve. And if I have to read the tea leaves of the way the coaches are going to make their decisions, it might not change anytime soon either. Last area I wanted to hit on with you, and it's why, I mean, it's the number one reason I think to fear the Jets in any playoff series. And Oilers fans saw it 
firsthand during the COVID year, the Canadian division year. Sorry. Neil but, Pionk. Neil Trouble. Pionk, yeah. yes. Uh, <laughs> but it's Connor Hellebuck. And my guy Frank Saravalli has been on this big thing about Hellebuck needs more love and not the Vesna conversation, the Hart Trophy conversation. Frank thinks it's been that kind of a season for Connor Hellebuck. Where do you come out on that debate of Hellebuck being involved in the Vez or in the Hart, and I guess just in general, goalies being involved in the Hart Trophy conversation? Well, I should speak plainly and say that in 2019-20, that pandemic interrupted season, when Winnipeg was just on the tail end of a playoff spot when the season was interrupted, that team defense was so bad and Hellebuck so good. I believe he was on my Hart Trophy ballot, if not number one. Like that team was so porous defensively Bufflin had just left Truba had been traded Myler signed elsewhere Chirot signed elsewhere it was gutted and when a goalie has that kind of impact I believe in a heart trophy vote I really really do this season I think he's been almost even better you look at those numbers you've got him posted up I think he's a lock for the Vezina trophy barring some kind of horrid collapse down the stretch and that's even after getting beat and getting pulled for the first time this weekend his body of work is as good as it gets in the NHL I think the team's defense, at least if you count the first half of the season, has been good enough that I'm not Hart Trophy voting Connor Hellebuck. He's not going to be towards the top of that ballot, but he's been so good and goaltenders have such impact that if he doesn't get some votes, I'll, I, I do think it'll be a disservice. Yeah, I, I think he'll get some love, but I think I agree with you as well. That system in front of him is so damn good. It's going to make it interesting for the Jets. Murad, appreciate you hopping on and Hey, maybe we'll get a Jets, Oilers, Western Conference final. We'll have you in studio. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. See Always you. a pleasure catching up with Murata Tesh on the Star Mechanical Guest Line. You can find his fantastic work He's good. over at The Athletic. He's that awesome. Was ins- just an encyclopedia of yeah. info there. At WPG Murat on Twitter as well. Give him a follow. We tagged him in the show tweet today as well. Give him some love. I used to have him on all the time uh, when I produced The Lowdown with Low Tide. And he was like an OG low tide commenter oh, right, who yeah. then oh. turned into a sports writer and then got no the assignment. Way. From Winnipeg. Edmonton? Yeah. Or he's an Oilers fan, one of the two. Oilers um, fan, hey? Yeah. Mm. Great guy. Love catching up with Murat. All right. Uh, as promised, before we went to our guest, we have quotes from Evander Kane. It is Sounds of the Oil and it is presented to you by Snow Valley Aerial Park and the Rainbow Valley Campground. Snow Valley Aerial Park opens May 31st. Rainbow Valley Campground. You can find out more about them at rainbow-valley.com. Online bookings are opening soon. This summer, take advantage of the over 60 sites, 60 camping sites, and three comfort camping domes right here in the city. Rainbow Valley Campground, if you're listening, Liam and I would like to do a show live from a comfort camping dome. I don't know exactly what that entails or what they look like, but it sounds fun. I would love to. Go to Rainbow Valley website. Rainbow Valley website. Put in the dates and book the dome. Is this you saying I can do it? Oh, there it is. Showing you it's that easy. Look at that little thing. (laughs) Oh, that looks really cool. It's like furnished in there. Wow. Why would you not do this? We will do one. That is. How's the internet? I don't even care. Our internet (laughs) sucks on most days. (laughs) Anyways, Evander Kane speaking to the media. I don't know what's coming in this clip. Give it to me. Hook it to my veins. Getting back in after having a, a maintenance game or a maintenance day, uh, a couple of games. Uh, I feel good. I feel good, yeah. Was it just a buildup of things that sometimes just have one game off gives you an extra few days to rest and be ready? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? God, dude. Hell yeah. It's a non-story if he just says, yeah, I needed a night off. It's a non-story if he comes out and says pretty much anything oh, but the way he handled that. Oh, oh shit. But this is the reaction I thought I was going to get. That's <laughs> why he's not on the first line tonight. I'll tell you that much for free. I don't, whatever. I don't want to Do pile on. plays of it a little bit too, though, sometimes? Like, he had, like, a little smirk after both answers. And I get it. Like, I wish he had better answers for sure. But he's like, I wonder if, like, he just had a bit of a different conversation with Chris Knobloch. I'm defending him a bit too much. I realize that, but like, I think he likes attention. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. But I think he also likes to play with the media a lot. But you like that didn't seem like a guy who was trying to play with the media. You don't think there. so? He had like smirks after his answers and everything. Yeah, I, I think he looked bad. 
Listen, well, I, fair, think I missed he... the first part that I was looking at these comfort suites. Well, okay, so. as you should. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, let's right. play it again. All right, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. Just getting back in after having a, a maintenance game or a maintenance day uh, a couple of games. Uh, I feel good. I feel good, yeah. Was it just a buildup of things that sometimes just have one game off gives you an extra few days to rest and be ready? I guess so, yeah. Where's the smile? He did it on the end of that one. He's like biting his tongue. He looks like perturbed by being asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Daryl Sutter says he shouldn't be happy about being benched. This is how a player should respond. Oh, okeah, but the team also didn't say he was benched. So, like, what's <laughs> the deal? Maybe wrong of them. Maybe, maybe it was wrong. Maybe said. Chris Knobloch should have just said, we're hey, sitting him tonight. John Tortorella just scratched his captain the other day, which and, was but, whatever it was. But he didn't have a problem coming out being like, yeah, I scratched him. He hasn't been playing well. I do also understand it a bit from Knobloch's perspective preventing it from being a storyline that the wow the oilers are healthy scratching evander kane it really wasn't a headline i mean we talked no, about i get, I get why yeah i know i get why Novak did what he did he's now making it seem like they healthy scratched him and he's yes. making it a headline about himself i, I think know. they should have just said he was healthy scratched in the first place and just moved on because at the end of the day you take away the name is a guy who hasn't scored in 20 games or whatever yeah yeah, hey, it's fair. Uh, West Side Chain, whatever. He just he better just play better, and none of this matters. Shane, I am so 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 one thousand percent on board with you. If he goes out there and plays hard and goes to that and does all the things that make Evander Kane one of the most impactful players on this roster when he's at his best, I don't care. Well, he can do whatever kind of antics he wants in the media. It, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. It's when he goes how many games without scoring a goal. Uh, since Arizona, whatever that was, 20, 20 now? Since we were at the Mullet Arena, he has awesome. not scored a goal. It's that coupled with this, coupled with the up and down effectiveness outside of the goal column. Like, it's all of that stuff. Another layer to this. Do you remember when he got demoted to the third line? And then the next game, who it was against? The Winnipeg Jets. He ah. got in a fight, didn't he? He got in a fight with Brendan, Brendan Dillon, Dillon. And then he spoke. I guess that would have been the game he spoke in the intermission and was like, yeah, I only played this one. I wasn't playing, minutes, so, so I thought I'd yeah. fight. So there you go. Maybe tonight is the night we see Evander Kane come back around. I hope so. They need him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Maybe this is just him trying to amp himself up. He's clearly pissed. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and if, I mean, whatever. This is what he needs to do to amp himself up, then have at her, I guess. Um, all right. There you go. Sounds of the Oil brought to you by Snow Valley Aerial Park and the Rainbow Valley Campground. While we were on with Marat, Am I getting ripped in the chat? Oh, big oh, time. Yeah. For yeah. what? Just being, for, uh, for being a Jets homer. Oh, for being an every other team homer. Do we have the Jets lines? Yep. Put them up. There we go. Does this not look impressive to you? Yeah. It's a good lineup. Is Connor Hellebuck not going to potentially unanimously win the Vesna this year? Uh yeah, him you're getting hurt because you good. wore a Vegas jersey. This yeah, is what that, you get. I mean, you that, play, was, on your that was objectively hilarious, though. <laughs> I don't know if it was. Damn it. Oh, okay. to, oh, okay. to who? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, come on. This is, that second line is nasty. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I haven't even once said this second line is better than the Oilers or their, this top nine's even better than the Oilers. I'm not even going that far. I'm just saying it's really damn good. That's all. Do you think the top nine is better than the Oilers' top nine? Uh, I don't. I'm just doing the mental checks here. No, no. I think the third Bottom line picks, no. is the, the this the deciding factor. I think if the Oilers were to distribute things right, they're better. Yes, that's. True. I think they can match that third line if it's distributed right. Because also a third line, uh, Appleton, Nina Ryder, Lowry. Is that it? OJ Tyler also takes every forward defensive group over Edmonton. Find me one team I've said has a better forward group than the Oilers. Find the clip. Find it. Go back. Do your own research. Don't trust mainstream media. Don't tr t trust what the mainstream YouTube chats are telling you. Do your own research. <laughs> and you tell me if I've ever said that. I don't remember once ever saying there's a forward group better than Edmonton. Uh, I don't do you remember, remember you saying words. something about Hyman being rich. And that is why he's so good at hockey. <laughs> I recall that many weeks ago. I said there's forward groups with a larger net worth than the Oilers in terms of family wealth. But I've never said they're better. Uh <laughs> Break ass, you know, people want you to chant cup your all show, Tyler. We could do that. That is true. We just, say it once. we just run a clip of me for 60 minutes just saying cup your over and over again. That would be pure entertainment. And <laughs> some of you might actually stick around for that whole hour, actually. <laughs> and then just immediately cut it off for an ad read like every six minutes. <laughs> That's the whole show.
All right, let's get to our game notes for today's matchup. It's brought to you by nationgear.ca, where you can get tickets to our next game day at Greta. It's in support of the Logan Hunter Memorial Fund. You can get your tickets nationgear.ca. You get free swag at the door. There'll be plenty of prizes to be won, food and beverage specials, and more. And as always with our game days at Greta, it goes towards a good cause april 6th is the sixth anniversary of the humboldt broncos tragedy that is something that obviously a lot of us hold near and dear to our hearts so happy to be supporting the logan hunter memorial fund and very excited to be back at greta for the final boa of the season so get your tickets now nationgear.ca here's a little bit of stuff from the game notes again jason gregor's got the full thing up at the site mcdavid joined joe thornton as the only player with 90 assists in a season since 2000 this was a mailbag question on Monday, and it was like, hey, is Connor McDavid not getting enough love for being or getting this close to the 100 assist mark and mm-hmm. only being the fourth player in the league to potentially do it? I think once we get closer, this is going to become a bigger and bigger story because he is right there, and he is not going to be denied. Yeah, totally. I, I agree. That's been a it, – I think it's getting more and more popular. Yeah, he has 11 assists in his last four games. Well, you know, there's only have two wins, so maybe you should start shooting. Interesting take. <laughs> I know no one in the chat's gonna no one in the chat's gonna clown Liam for that. No, they love his McDavid agenda. Noted McDavid hater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> World's biggest Kucherov fan. No, I said Kucherov wasn't even in the conversation. Ah, okay. I'm Nathan McKinnon for the heart. Oh, I saw mine. How dare you? Oh, they're going to let me have that too. Um, <laughs> just quickly on Kucherov and McKinnon, I suppose. Connor McDavid, five points back of Nate Mack, six, six points back of Nikita Kucherov. He has two more games to play than both of those players, though. <laughs> so if he beats him in points, should he not win the heart? Or is it because McKinnon has this crazy home point streak? Colorado is a good team. I do think there's a bit of an argument. And we are as well. I think there's a bit of an argument to McKinnon that he's done it so consistently this year. He hasn't really had a cold stretch outside of... I know, but the Oilers are so reliant. Like, if we don't have McDavid and then even Dreisaitl and you replace them with, I don't know, um, who's like uh, Pedersen and JT Miller, we wouldn't make the playoffs. No. That means that Fucking McDavid's a factor. Yeah, I don't think any Colorado make the playoffs with McKinnon's hurt all year. Probably. Yeah, probably. Mm. Case closed. To argue against against your point, you don't like when people call the Oilers a one-man team. No, but we also know with how we have built this roster for some reason, we rely heavily on those two. Yep. And we truly don't go all in because we rely on the fact that those two are just that much better than everyone else. It's annoying, but the Hart Trophy is also a very narrative-driven award at times. I think there's just a sense that... I've got like, a narrative. Us without McDavid and Colorado without McKinnon are two completely different teams, obviously, but Colorado is still better than Edmonton. Yeah. That's fair. I know you had a different short for giant question, but I'll throw this out there for a okay. game day. Give me a percent chance you think McDavid uh, McDavid does it. Comes uh, back, comes back points? and passes on passes both Kucherov and McKinnon and wins the Art Ross. Oh boy. It's a tough one, Liam. Well, I think you asked me this a couple of weeks ago and I said like 60%. But now mm. it's closer. Mm-hmm. I do you know what the others really need some wins here, so I think that might let me think about it. it. I will say sixty seven percent. Couldn't even just go for the nice number, eh? What's wrong with 67? It's about a nice prime number, I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Nothing divides into 67 outside of one and 67. There you go. Uh, let me okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do some math here. Are you ready for it? You need more prime numbers? I got a few. I, I you didn't get my joke about trying to pick anyways. Uh <laughs> Which it is also, no, it's not a prime number. Three would definitely divide into that nice number. Three is a prime number. Did you just Google prime numbers? <laughs> is it seven a prime okay, number? Okay, take yeah. uh, oh. 97 is a prime number. Hey. Okay, okay, three times 23. Three times 29. Nice. <laughs> Ding. 
Um, math guy. Okay, you ready? You ready for my math? I just yeah. went through my advanced analytics filter of whether Connor McDavid is going to catch up and win the Art Ross. Okay. 100%. Yeah, you're probably right. Hundred percent. Now, I think the thing too with McDavid is he very rarely just has like one point nights. Like he'll always he's been getting multi point nights as if it's his job, and it is. <laughs> and they've got some huge games coming up. Yes, too. and like what has happened in big games? Yeah, well, the odd time will rely on depth scoring, but Connor shows up. He actually has a second. He has a better points per game than Mc, uh, McKinnon this season. I didn't realize that. Hmm. One seven five. Weird in games in hand. The math is just gonna catch up and work itself out. Well, Kucherov has a better points per game than McDavid and played three more. Oh, games. how great would it be? I mean, the thing with McDavid in the Miles games in hand is he might get a day off to end the regular season, yeah. so he maybe only has actually one game in hand. But how great would it be? Like second last game regular season at Mullet Arena, McDavid just torches the Yotes for like six well, points. I saw a thing the other day, oh, and good. this is something that's come up quite often this past week because McDavid now has more assists than Jamie Ben had when he won the out uh, Ross that season. But I never realized that was how, a bad year. how tight that was. That race was like, it basically came down to the last day of the season and Jamie Ben had to get like four points, something like that. And he got it on an empty net goal. And he got it like his last two points to win the out Ross in the last two minutes. So we might see that with McKinnon and McDavid in that final game of the year, which would be fun. Yeah. That would be cool. You know, right. it's actually amazing. Ovi's woken up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, we are running out of time today on the show, so we got to get to the Sherwood Power Sports and Marine keys to victory for this evening. Sherwood Power Sports and Marine now open and is the exclusive spot in Sherwood Park for all things Yamaha, which include Yamaha boats, boat motors, dirt and street bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, and motorcycles. Check them out in the heart of Sherwood Park with that sleek all-black exterior at Sherwood Power Sports and Marine. Key to victory this evening. What are we going with? This is a weird one to come up with a key to victory for because there are a lot of things I'd like to see the Oilers do better than they did on the weekend. Keep it tight. Not within the game itself, but like on Saturday, on Sunday, the game was so loose once Ottawa Mm -hmm. got over the red line and it was just like the defense was all over the place. So Keep it, sh- it, it up, be more yeah. structured. Tighten it up. Yeah. yeah. Tighten it up. Tighten it up big time. Wake the hell up. Like, yeah. but yes, I think if they, and this is what will lead to my bet and logic behind my bet tonight is just tighten it up and get a dub. Tighten it up. Simple as that. Yeah. Perfect. Like that was like, that wasn't the Oilers the last two games. That's not what we've been used to in the, in the last three months. Mm-hmm. So like they just got to wake back up and tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, I'm going to go to what we talked with Murat about. Since they acquired Sean Monaghan, they have the sixth best power play in the NHL at 27.3%. Your PK has to be better tonight. Mm -hmm. If you're going to give the Jets two or three power play opportunities, which again, that's the average, you probably will give them that amount. You cannot give up two or three goals. Your PK needs to be much, much better. When you think back to the Oilers going on those long winning streaks and all that, the PK being damn near perfect was a big, big reason why. So that's from the crease on out. They need to be better on the PK tonight. That's my key to victory. Yep, I think that's a good one. The PK especially. Just don't, dude, it's so bad. Like, mm-hmm. guy's wide open. That Drake Batherson one was nuts. He literally he, just took one step and everything was available to him. Yeah, yep, that, was Cal, that was Calvin Pig's fault. <laughs> yes, that was. Fair. Everything was. <laughs> um, there's your head-to-head there between. Probably the, didn't have rich parents, eh? <laughs> no, Calvin <laughs> no. Pickard, very poor. Couldn't push up. him over the hump. <laughs> very. Yeah. Uh, my favorite part of that Berkshire yeah. rant or another great part is when he goes, Zach Hyman's parents bought him training that only rich people could perform. And, and then he stops. <laughs> he goes, I mean, afford. And I was like, no, no, I like the idea that there's certain <laughs> training things only rich people can actually perform. Uh, all right. Enough of that. Let's get to the Betway game day betting challenge with Betway. You can get a free bet up to $200. If your first bet loses, how you ask, well, scan the QR code on your screen and redeem your bonus. Simply create a new account, place a bet with no minimum amount required. And if the bet loses, you will get a refund up to $200. You can then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. This offer is only available outside of Ontario. QR code right there on your screen to create your new account with Betway. Uh, gentlemen, Betway Game Day betting challenge. We got our picks in. Mm-hmm. Jay, do you hear those footsteps? Oh, 
God, shut up. You're not even gonna your get- bet. Your bet is so weak that if you win, it does. It, you, you probably still lose a unit. <laughs> if I win and you lose tonight, I'm ahead of you. It's the old tortoise in the hare. <laughs> yeah, you guys really. What a battle you've had! I can almost. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm. I'm gonna win. And it's gonna be. And it's gonna make such. And and even if you win, I'm gonna take such a giant step forward. Liam is red hot though. Liam yeah, is red hot, but he's but he's, but he's but he's predictable. But I guess ride the hot hand. Mm-hmm. I'm picking winning bets. I picked a band against Skull last game. Yeah, that was good. So that didn't work out too well for me. But McDavid two plus assists plus one sixty two. The lowest I've found it. Mm. Months catching on to us. I'm going Hyman over three and a half shots, 20 shots in his last four games. Hit this in four straight. There you go. Just go All right. like Hyman goal, man. You've got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like it's plus one. I'm surprised you did, like, like that was the easy bet all weekend. It's plus one. Or just back go both days, cash cash minus 105. No, Hyman goal is plus 105. Oh, Hyman goal. Oh, yeah. So it's not even like you're going risky. Like, yeah, rich parents. <laughs> yeah, must, yeah. They allowed Liam to have betting training that the rest of us simply couldn't afford. Yeah, you can afford it. So you can double that. I, I my theory is you have two teams that have been playing loose, and this is kind of like a conference matchup. So I expect both to tighten up, and so and and it always seems to be tight when we play these guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking it's like a two one three one three two type game. I can see that. Although so, Hellebuck's been struggling as well. It's it's juicy enough. Almost puts me into the positive. Connor Hellebuck in his career against the Oilers, 3-2-1 goals against average, 9.05 save percentage. But in his last five games against the Oilers, those numbers jump. 297 GAA, 917 save percentage for Connor Hellebuck. Let's wrap up the show with the menu for our friends at DoorDash. 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. New episode of Oilers Nation Radio going to drop a couple of hours from now. New episode of the DFO Rundown up on the Daily Face Off yeah. YouTube. So head over there, subscribe, consume that. That'll bring you pretty close right consume up to when, it all. to when Oilers Nation Radio drops. Make sure you subscribe to both YouTubes. And over on the website, we got game notes. And um, you have an article, don't you? Oh, yeah. I wrote one on the playoffs picture in the Pacific and the West because there's still a very good race going on. Uh, and then I'll have something on the tape later this week. Ooh, have you decided who the players no, going to be? I'm going to hunt them down on Thursday. If you That's haven't me. caught the so first two shift by shift of a player, yeah, Liam does new shift by shift analysis on the website for mm. players. Picks a game, breaks down one player. Very good stuff over at OilersNation.com. Uh, also, pregame with Boardsy tonight at five with myself and Aaron, and then post game with Zachary Lang. Post game with Zach Lang. One of my so. good luck sweater. Nah, very good. Let's go. <laughs> All right. That is a wrap on today's edition of the show. Big shout out to Marat Atesh for swinging by. Big shout out to all you in the Charm Diamond Center's YouTube chat today as well. That's uh, That'll do it for another Sherwood Ford Giant Game Day edition of the show. Frank Cervalli and Liam tomorrow on the show as well. Chat with you then. Thank you for watching Oilers Nation every day. Hit the subscribe button to never miss a show. And for more, visit OilersNation.com.